Sauces and dressing. Yeah, hey, Mike, it was interesting. They had And I'm going to make a corn salsa. Which herb can reduce the toxicity? It comes from materials. Arts endowment that the Herb Fest supports. Chickweed. Uh, it's found in yards in most waste places. It usually pops up in the beginning of spring when it's nice and cool and crisp. It dies off in hot weather. And I love the tea. I will make tea, mix it with sage, rose hips, and cinnamon. And it's just a refreshing tea to drink. You can dry it or you can um, brew it fresh in the pot. And it's a demulcent. It's good for the skin. It's a cooling agent. And I have it in just about every salve that I make. And um, it does relieve itchy skin. Now, um, some think it curbs obesity. Uh, well, one of the reasons it may curb obesity is that you drink enough of the tea, you're going to go to the bathroom. Because it will act as a mild diuretic and a mild laxative. But uh, long-term weight loss, no. You don't use herbs to lose weight with. And. Um, there's the tea recipe that I use, with chickweed being two parts, the rest being one part. Two parts would be like two handfuls, one part would be a tablespoon, tablespoon, tablespoon. And you've got you some chickweed tea. That's my own personal recipe, which I love. Kudzu. Well, as you can see, it's used for a lot of things. Headaches, diarrhea, dysentery, intestinal obstructions, gastroenteritis. Deafness, promote measles eruptions because you want the measles to come out. You don't want to stop them from happening and it induces sweating. Tea made from the flowers used to treat stomach acid and to expel drunkenness. So if you've been out drinking all night, drink some kudzu tea. The stem is used as a poultice for sore, swelling, mastitis, uh, and so on. Chock full of vitamin E. I feed this to my horses if, if I work them, plowing or whatever. This is what I will give my horses as a treat because it's so high in protein. And it makes beautiful baskets. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. It's easier to work with than grapevines. Your dogwood tree. It is a weed. It grows wild. During the Civil War, the dogwood root bark tea was used to treat malaria fevers and, of course, diarrhea. The tea is an astringent, uh, astringent, I'm sorry. The root bark poultice can be put on external ulcers and the African slaves would chew on the twigs of the dogwood tree to clean their teeth. And it was, you know, Amer early Americans had the nastiest teeth, no hygiene, and they were into sugar real heavy, so their teeth were virtually rotting out of their mouth. Well, the African slaves were doing this and their teeth were superior and beautiful because of this. All right, Queen Anne's Lace is also a wild carrot. Beautiful, beautiful plant. But it should not ever be confused with its cousin, poison hem, hemlock. They are almost identical with one exception. Poison hemlock has a purple stock. So if you don't know how to properly identify these plants, don't go out and pick them. And like I said, sometimes the poison hemlock will have purple spots on it, but if it's a younger plant, you're not going to see them in their full form. So you may pick it thinking you're picking the Queen Anne's Lace. So unless you really, really know your stuff, don't go out there and start harvesting it. Uh, this is currently being used for the uh, morning after pill. Science has since found seeds do prevent implantation or fertilized cells. Folk people would use this to do away with unwanted pregnancies. Um, it was also used to treat kidney stones and worms. And even today, you have to worry about worms. Anti-cancer activity has contributed to the seeds. And of course, it may cause blister to skin when handled. It doesn't blister me, but people who are sensitive or have subject dermatitis or allergies may blister. So I really suggest you take botany classes and just educate yourself. Key words, educate yourself. A lot of this material came from this book. Medicinal Plants and Herbs, Dr. James A. Duke. 
I am the um, treasurer of the North Carolina Herb Association. I sit on the board, and we will be having Wild Herb Weekend, the weekend of July 25th through the 27th, and Dr. James Duke is our guest speaker. His wife will be present. She's also a well-known botanist artist. Her drawings are in the Smithsonian. So we're thrilled to have them.